finally we made it to the Achampong village and when i tell you this place feels like africa wow this is a historical maroon village located in the hills of saint elizabeth parish on this island of jamaica it is located in cockpit country where jamaican maroons and indigenous tainos established a fortified stronghold yeah, it's just like home just like in africa wow. oh dear. this is and then the aroma is so good <laughs> I didn't watch you in my video. <laughs> you always don't want me in your video. You came by force. You always don't want me in your video, uh, but it's okay. It's so funny what you just did. It's hilarious. Waking up in this maroon village feels incredible. Do you know that maroons are descendants of Africans in the Americas and islands of Indian Ocean who escaped from slavery and formed their own settlement? They often mix with indigenous people, eventually evolving into separate Creole cultures. Morning, wake up. Done. <laughs> That was fun. Thank you. Workout, ah. We arrived here last night. I've got to tell you, coming up here is crazy. This Maroon village is located high up in this hilly terrain. And uh, you don't even understand. Coming up here, you've got to drive up straight up. The roads are whining and narrow. So honestly, I was scared for my life. But these Jamaican drivers, they know what they're doing. I guess they're just used to their roads. Thank God we arrived safe and sound. So first thing we are doing in the morning is meeting up with the chief of the Achampong village. And he has welcomed us with open arms. But there is also the settlement where the Maroons resided, which was originally called Kojo Town, right? Mm. That was renamed Trelawney Town after the signing of the treaty. Now that is a that was a different territory from Trelawney the parish as you know it. Yeah. Right? Uh, so that can be a little bit confusing but um, if you look at the map of cockpit country and you imagine Trelawney Town being a subset of cockpit country meaning a circle within a circle yeah right so Trelawney town was the circle that captured all the communities where the maroons settled at the time Follow? Yeah. people love this chief everywhere we pass guys we just stop and wave wave at him oh so sweet <laughs> We are up a hill and um, it's really green, it's really quiet, it's really beautiful. When I say beautiful, I mean naturally beautiful. Right behind me we have the chief of the Maroons and he has been very kind to us. He actually came for us uh, when he arrived, drove with us and brought us to this point where he showed us his throne which is actually under a tree. Who would have thought? I really thought he was going to take us to somewhere really fancy and glamorous, but he was just bringing us under this tree. And he says this is where he sits. This is uh, his chair. Very interesting. I have learned that the Achampong village got its name from its founder, who was called Achampong. He was brother of Kweku, Kojo, and Nani, the leader and founder of the Nani town. Thank you for welcoming us to the Maroon Village. So uh, there are several Maroon Villages. How many are there? So currently there are five villages. Five. Right? There's Moreton, Charlestown, Scottsall. They're all on the eastern side of the island. They're mm -hmm. referred to as the Windward Maroons. Right? Windward because of the treaty that was signed to repatriate lands after 1738. So you will hear of two treaties, 1738, 1739 and it relates to 
windward and leeward. So we are in the leeward territory, cockpit country, and that includes a compound, and then there's Flagstaff, which okay. is northeast of here. Uh, what's the difference between this community and other maroon communities? All right, so the significance of a compound stems from, of course, this is where the treaty was essentially signed. Kodro left from a compound, uh, marched to Peace Cave, and he met with the, the representatives of the Crown to sign that treaty. Um, a compound today um, still hold a large um, part of that history, and the remnants of what we have preserved today um, is indicative of the culture which existed at the time and of course preserved some of what um, we carry, to, to work, carry forward today in terms of our food, our, our medicine. Compound um, symbolizes the true um, identity of those people who were identified as Maroons. The other villages, of course, they do have um, the Maroon um, residents and of course those who represent and carry the culture. The challenge we have with other communities is um, the practice of the culture and of course the support that is needed um, in those communities haven't been as um, fulfilling or uh, you know forthcoming as one would have hoped. So other communities have suffered more than a compound has and we benefit a lot from tourism um, as well as agriculture. Um, a lot of these other territories I find it a little bit more challenging to to organize and structure um, you know, their, their surroundings and their systems in such a fashion. So um, we all face challenges, some more than others. Okay, so what would you stay, say stands out? Why do people come to visit this place? Why is the tourism major here? Well, as mentioned, the treaty which was signed here is such a symbolic uh, moment in the history of this island and for the people. Um, who it represents. I think a lot of people come here to get uh, a feel of that true essence of the people, right? The community, right? The food, right? The culture, the medicine. Um, we've managed to preserve all so of that. So you have a unique way of making food? Yes, of course. Um, a lot of our food uh, stems, you know, from the, the types of food that we eat, we used to eat back in the day. And the way it is even prepared, for example, um, you know, rundown and you know, you jerk. You know, the jerk. The process of jerk was invented and created by the Maroons. No way. Yes. Really? Because, yes. 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 So the jerk chicken that you you so crave when you come to Jamaica and the jerk pork, you know, it's all a part and parcel of the culture that has been handed down. Because to preserve the meat, the Maroons would season it richly with a lot of spices and herbs, mm -hmm. and they would wrap it with the banana leaves and other um, broad leaves and bury it right as a way of preserving it now all the spices and um herbs give it a rich taste which we you know define as jerk so um you know today who we are as a people the wider nation um identifies um through the culture is speaking of the culture that existed here through the maroons that's interesting i didn't know that what's the biggest misconception you'd like to clear about the maroons so um, the biggest misconception is that the Maroons were sellouts and um, a large part of that had to do with the story of blacks returning blacks to the plantations. Um, the treaty speaks specifically to how um, those who were taken from the plantation um, were treated. Kodjo gave them freedom. The treaty of 1738 gave color, 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 um, copper colored Negroes as we were called or um, you know, Negroes, a status, a status which was the freedom. And in the deliberations of how that treaty operated between the British and the, the, the Maroons meant that um, there were Negroes on the island who were, give, who were given freedom by subjecting to the Maroons because now after the treaty, there were two jurisdictions created, one for the free Negroes and one for the British. Many of the agreements that were engaged upon with other blacks implicated the, the relationship the Maroon had with the British. Now, there were um, um, bands of Negroes who operated as slave catchers, and there were agreements that were made between the Maroons of the past and the British. A lot of what has happened and transpired since Kojo has been misinterpreted and misinterpreted and misrepresented because the freedoms that were fought for were then given and afforded to anyone who chose to subject to Captain Kojo. So, 
for me um it's a great appreciation for um history might not be history in the way our ancestors knew it maybe in the the, the form of the story of one party and for us it means enriching the argument by bringing forth the conversations of our story and how things happened and that is something that still has not happened in jamaica and i think that's the root of where a lot of our issues are but what people must understand is in this immediate moment in time if you throw this treaty out you throw your birthright to land here in jamaica away the treaty was not only for maroons remember who the, de the definition of maroons were it was the free negroes the negroes who were on the island so it's a little bit complex but with a, a little bit of um you know the right atonement in in that the conversation need to be had on the past but with that said the understanding of where we stand now in international law as it relates to the treaty and it relates to the land the wider land every single person on this land has a right to land because of that treaty interesting thank you thank and you. you know this reminds me of our first president in kenya he always used to work with something like this and he used to bless our country with it is that the purpose that is it and it's also <laughs> <laughs> it's a symbolic of the leadership as well and it's supposed to keep away certain negative energy mm. so by blessing you oh thank you thanking you for coming thank you for having welcome me welcome you to the space oh thank you and also you. keep all negative energies from you, you have all negative energy spirit. away <laughs> thank you so much thank you thank you for coming i was telling him i love his outfit it's so african very Ghanaian. wow <laughs> Okay, thank you. I mean, like, listen, I, I'm hearing Captain Kujo for the first time from you, to be really? honest with you. Really? Yeah, because in my head, coming to Jamaica, all I knew was none of the Maroons fought for the freedom of the Maroons, right? Now I'm here and I'm hearing Captain Kujo and I'm not even hearing the name of Nani. So if Nani is a national hero, why is Captain Kujo not a national hero? Very good question. So. You remember I told you that the signing of the treaty mm. was symbolic of a political understanding between both parties. So Captain Kojo and the British would have recognized that you control your side of the business, we control our side of the business. So the Maroons through their leadership and successorship of the full Maroon Council have, cons have continued all these years to maintain their autonomous governance and relationship over the land while the British in 1962 would have put in place a responsible government to now handle their affairs on the land so you're different two, you're dealing with two separate entities so Captain Kojo belonging to the Maroons where there's an understanding that the British is now under the control of a government they made Nani a national hero Captain Kojo signed the treaty not Nani Captain Kojo would have been recognized in standing at that time as a separate entity from that of the crown. How would you then celebrate him as a national hero? To whose nation? So it's, you're saying that everything is political? Very much so. Freedom is political. I should have said that. <laughs> Now that you've learned the history of this Maroon village, I feel like it's time to take a tour. I feel like it really feels like Africa. It feels like home sweet home. You gotta watch to the end to see what I'm trying to tell you. As we are walking through this village, we have come across this homestead and wow. Guys, these guys have kontomre here. That's my favorite vegetable. And then we would strip it. And then we would tie this, a bundle, put it in the pot and boil it. Yeah. And after I boil somewhere, we take it out and chop it up and put it back in the pot. You saw not how would they make so, it in Ghana? So this is how we do this it. This is crazy. You see what? Yeah. Like this. Yeah. I can't believe they have contumbre here. We mash it, but if I you can don't live mash in Jamaica. It, you can also I can live in Jamaica. And then boil it. And then put it back in the pot and boil yeah. it. That's my favorite and vegetable. What, what, what do you guys call it here? Sometimes I make what we call pepper pot soup. Pepper pot soup. Yeah. You know, this gives blood. In, yeah. in, that's how our ancestors taught us. How yeah. about you? 
Yeah, man. Mm. Same way, man. <laughs> I, I grow with my granny, you know, so I know how to cook all different, different meals, too. You know? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, man. Ah. So, the pumpkin bud, this is, this Yeah. Ah. And, and, and all this, too. All the pumpkin bud can cook, too, you know? Mm. Yeah. We don't, I, I don't cook pumpkin. And this? This is called Spanish Negro. Yeah. It's and this can cook like Kalalu too, you know? Yeah. But the young ones, not the real. This is a bit too tough now. But like this, we would strip this like Kalalu and we'd make coconut milk. And then we put nice it in the pot meat. and we'd cut up this and put it in it and eat it like vegetable. Oh my wow. God. This is my favorite vegetable. Oh my God. What? And the way they're making their food here, I feel, really feel like you're in Africa. This is so cool. Yeah, wow. Just like Can I see the fish? Yeah. Yeah, it's just like home. Just like in Africa. Wow. Over there. This is, and then the aroma is so good. Yeah, nice. Wow. And you're going to eat it with the banana? Yeah. Can I please see the banana? Is it so hot? Oh, uh, we get used to the heat. This is how our ancestors used to do it. Oh, it's really? Not the modern gas stove, like how we have gas stove now. This is how we used to do it. Wow. Look at that, guys. Wow. And what do you call this meal? Well, this is a staple banana, dumpling. Uh, we have yam. We we'll call it renta yam here in Jamaica. White yam. Mm -hmm. So, those are the main three staples in this meal. Oh, okay. And then we have steamed fish. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. I'm salivating. I'm also welcome to eat. All right. Salute and big up all of the people and whether you are watching right now. And this is how we live a compound, African tradition first. All right. Enough love, respect, and heart of love. Oh, thank you. We love you too. Yeah. I know the world loves us. So okay. we love the world. Thank More you. love, one love. Uh, respect big up yourself yeah every time <laughs> i love to tell people that uh, big up yourself yes, sir. <laughs> i love telling the jamaicans that that's my favorite thing to say so we're still moving around we've seen they really leave like africans i guess it's because they didn't lose much of their culture when they came here so it, it, i just feel like i'm in africa like what I, i'm sorry i'm so sorry like i just thought jamaicans live totally differently but it's so beautiful to, like i feel at home in jamaica that's what i'm trying to say in short i really feel like i'm home look at this feels like an african village oh, wow and sometimes you have to be on your knees like this to blow the fire Bro you do the same thing yeah, man. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It feels like you're in Africa. All right, cover it back, Lola. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would love to eat your food, man. What yeah. do you have in here? Some fishes. Fish? Yeah. You got mm -hmm. it from the. Got it from the shop. Oh These my goodness! Wow, that looks good. That looks so good, man. Yeah. Mm. Can you let me stay with you for a day? Yes, man. You want you want to get something and him cook of, tomorrow? Of, no, I want to eat this food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right now. <laughs> it, it, right I eat this now. food. What do you mean tomorrow? Yeah. Now, now, now. Right now. <laughs> yes, man. Guys, um, so we are moving around the Achampong village, and I've met this beautiful girl. She's seven years old. Say hi. Hi. Say hi. hi. This is her sister and they've made me so emotional um i'm talking to them and they told me they lost their mom last year in may and um, i'm trying to talk to them and encourage them because i'm telling them that i also lost my mom too you know but when i lost my mom i was actually young uh, i was older than them i was 16 but she's only seven you're seven how old are you and she's 10 they're still so young they just made me so emotional actually i was moving around with maya and the rest of the team and they actually left me behind i don't even know how i'm gonna find my way but i just had to stop and encourage them because i know the pain of losing a mom um and i'm just trying to tell them that they're gonna be okay it's making me so emotional i'm actually starting to tear up 
because they're just so young and their girls and their mom is gone and girls they need their mom you know like girls usually need their mom more more than you can ever imagine so i wish them all the best and i just pray that they're gonna be okay and i'm encouraging them and telling them that uh it's gonna be fine you know and god is gonna take care of us even though i lost my mom when i was really young god took care of me you know and um they're just gonna they're gonna be fine yeah so um yeah i don't even know what to say but you guys are gonna be fine okay and god loves you yeah. take care of yourselves okay take care of your sister okay at least you have each other <laughs> i didn't have a sister but you guys are so sweet i need to go but i wish i met you guys earlier but i pray that you guys are gonna be okay and i'm gonna be praying for you okay oh okay. and your mom loves you we can follow you up you can follow me we can follow you up there and come back you can follow me and come back okay let's go oh my god <laughs> <laughs> now I missed the tour of the of the Achampong village because these guys are being given a tour but it's worth it like if I can help a girl who is in the same situation I was in I mean why not so yeah we are I guess you guys are gonna give me a tour of the Achampong village so you're telling me what makes soap there's the tree this tree yeah how and like you rub it with water and then turn soap rub it with water and it turns into soap yeah what that's so interesting i didn't know that so is that what you guys use or we use normal soap you use normal soap yeah oh wow okay mm, this is a graveyard these are people in this village are buried yeah oh okay there's another tree but what's a tree for it's the same soap tree. Of course, it's a soap tree. What's, what do you call the tree? I don't know. I just know that it needs soap. Uh, okay. Oh, thank you. You're really educating me. Guys, look at this tree. Apparently, you, when you rub these leaves, uh, it makes soap. That's so interesting. Ooh, thank you for sharing. What else do I need to know about this village? Um, you know, a bang. A bang? Yeah. Uh, what's that? They blow it. If there's like someone die they blow it mm -hmm. and if um mm -hmm. there's a meeting they blow it and more things they, they they blow it they used to blow it or they still blow it up to now they still blow it they do <laughs> so how often do they blow it when's the last time it was blown um i don't remember but they blow it uh -huh. okay thank you for sharing Mm, guys it's it's like a horn um they showed us earlier so you blow the horn and people know they need to come out and what is this is sand yeah. i've noticed that here in jamaica you guys have really white sand this is i've never seen white sand like this before it's literally white wow i'm used to brown sand so yeah there's brown sand too there's brown sand too mm. oh okay so this is the brown sand that we are used to and then there's the really really white sand wow okay this is the Achampong uh, symmetry. Don't paint on the um, gravy. Oh, yes. Sorry? Um, if you paint on the gravy, you have to bite off your ten fingers. What? If I point at the grave? Yeah. What's going to happen? Yeah, you see your hands turn black. I don't your hands turn black? Yeah, but I don't know that. I'm going to have to bite off your ten because fingers. Because I did it once, but nothing happened. You did it once, nothing happened to you? Yeah. Oh, okay. So you said you they, you they you who bites off your fingers? No, well, like go like this. Like, like so you're not supposed to point at the grave. No. Okay, I didn't know that. Thank you for the information. What else do they tell you to do or not to do here? Nothing dangerous. They just. Do you know? Do you know the meaning of maroon? Yeah. What is the meaning of maroon? The meaning of my own about the slaves, about the ancestors, mm -hmm. the, the runaway slaves, they call, um, give them maroon name after them. Wow, you're so wise. Oh my god, you are so wise. What does wow. wise, what? What, what, wise mean? What does wise mean? Yeah. It means someone who is very intelligent, someone who is smart, someone who knows many things. 
it means wise that that is wise so i'm telling her she's so wise and this dog has been following us around is this your dog yeah <laughs> i say i'm like where is this dog going oh hello how are you Good, how are you? I'm fine. I came to do a video about your village. Okay. That's yeah. nice. Thank you. What is your name? My name is Trudy. Oh, my name is Henry. Henry, nice to meet you. Okay, Trudy, have a nice day, you too, Henry. I see these guys are so friendly. I love it. I just love it so much. You can visit my other uncle down the shop. Oh really? Wanna go say hi? Yeah. What is one thing you know about your village that uh, that is beautiful? Or that you want people to know about the Maroon village? Uh, more about the culture. What about the culture? They're not Germans. But it's rich. Our culture is rich. Your culture is rich? Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's friendly. So we are 100% crime free. Uh -huh. We are friendly here. We care for each other. We know everyone by their name. Mm. Oh, and wow. we don't pay land tax for our land. Oh, how comes? Uh, yes, and our land by, by, by the treaty that was signed between the Maroon and the British. Uh -huh. And um, also, um, so our, 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 our chief is our, 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 what we refer to as our Prime Minister. Oh, wow. Yes. So your Prime Minister is not the Prime Minister yeah. of Jamaica? No. Is it a country within a country? Yes. yes. State really? within a state. State within a state? Yes. Interesting. I didn't know that. Ah, there's a lot for you to learn. Oh, wow. Yeah, what else should we learn about the Maroon? It will take you more than a day. <laughs> wow. That's really yeah. interesting information. The majority we grow our own food here. Uh-huh. Yeah. What we grow is what we eat. Okay. So 85% of what we grow is yeah, what we you eat. eat here. You don't import food. No. No. But um, and that's why I say 80, 85%, probably just 15%. That's that's really like rice, rice, we don't grow rice in our village. Ah. And so because of that, the Maro live to see a pretty fair age because every day we go and look fresh food. Oh, wow. Eat. While other pe persons in the rest of Jamaica, they would, um, for the week, they purchase food for the month. And I and, know uh, every day we have reap, go, reap fresh food. Like so what's the average food? age of people who, the Maroons? Uh, average age. 80, 90, mm -hmm. upward. Okay. Yes. That's interesting. So you guys live long. The secret yes, is in the food you, you eat. If you were having a look on the headstone uh, at, 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 at the grave, you would see for yourself that oh, really? what I'm saying to you is So ma many people don't die young, the maroons? No. no, no. That's what I'm saying to you. Wow. And if you notice, you see how we, we fit. We, uh -huh. we don't carry this overload oh, belly. And you know, you see how we look here in the village. Mm -hmm. Very healthy. If you go around, you would find the majority look like this. Very fit. And very healthy. Very right. We don't baggage. We don't look like that. Wow. Yes, yeah, we, don't, we don't really depend on fast food. Fast so, oh, wow. Fast food and a my and a our style. Right. So if you, you can mark it for yourself, go, uh, as you go around, you start to look at the build of the people. Yeah. So we walk, go to our farm. Yeah. And it, you're, you're a woman, so you get a lot of views on the guys. Eh? Sorry? You're, you're a woman, so you get a lot of views on the guys. Eh? When the guys you see, you can talk to them. Okay. Would you say you are the healthiest people in Jamaica? Sure. 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 Oh, wow. Yes. Because That's we spend culture. less on Dr. Bill. We, we spend less. Oh, wow. Thank you for sharing. Bill. Yeah, look at the guys, look, look for yourself. You see, we don't, you know, very healthy. Yeah, yeah. what do you say? Our oh, ear is, oh, is clean, you know. we don't have them factory like, but that gives you all those pollutants. Yeah, right. oh wow, yeah. very good information. Thank you for sharing. Yes, and your name? My name is Trudy, and you're from? I'm from Africa. That's so nice. I, I we dream to be in Africa, we love everything about oh, Africa. really? We, yeah. Oh, I wow, watch, I, I, I keep myself updated. Mm. Mm. With Africa, Africa and and and, and, and Ghana, Kenya, whole of oh, Africa. that's amazing. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. We serve pan in it after. Remember our, 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 our food parents, our our ancestors, Africa. I should say, mm -hmm. are, are from Africa. Wow. Um, me and so, I understand so from, 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 from the whole coast, line. from 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 Ghana. And, 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 the, and other places. They all understand there were three tribes, the Karamanti, the Ashanti tribe, and the Kofi. Come inside. This is my little store. Mm, that's nice. Mm -hmm. So you people here uh, on the hill, people don't have to go down. You have stores where people can just come and buy right, things. Right, yes. We, yeah. we, we, go in, we go into um, town mm -hmm. and we purchase and then the villager they come and purchase from us. Okay. Yes. So, so what what is a one message you have for Africans? Right, Africans. 
it's for Africans to unite. Mm. All Africans to unite and so that we can win we can win the battle against um, poverty. Wow. And, and against this unity mm -hmm. and all of that. Just study how the Chinese um, operate. And even the white and all of that and see. But we are much greater than them. them. No, but right, we could yeah, be we, we, much could, than we could be much greater if we did unite mm -hmm. as the, as black, you know? Right, so that's why we want them to patronize us. So, so are you proud to be black? Of yes. course. You, you don't think a white are superior? No, we don't, no, no, no. <laughs> we don't, no. No, no, we don't, no. We don't, we don't, <laughs> we, we don't, don't, we don't carry that, 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 that mindset. But if you like, you can give one to your uncle, one to this one, you keep the other one, or you can keep it to yourself. It's all yours. Do whatever you decide to do. Love you guys. I love you guys so much. Bye. Oh. Hi, that's so sweet. My camera is full. I had to start filming with my phone, <laughs> but it's so, it's so. I'm, I'm just happy. I'm learning so much, and everyone here is so friendly. Everyone you are meeting is just super friendly. Is this, is this a maroon thing, or is it a Jamaican thing? I've also learned that apparently the maroon is a country within a country. Hi, how are you? <laughs> apparently, I didn't know that. I thought they're Jamaicans. We will live and we learn every day, so let's keep going. So they've got their schools up here. Look at this. They've got schools, they've got churches. They've literally built a whole community on top of the hill. And even their houses, how their houses are just okay up here is a wonder. I, I don't understand how. Are they not scared of erosion or something? Look at that. This guy is playing football. When you see people playing football, you already know Maya will be there playing with them. Look at that. <laughs> hey guys, I have a question for jamaicans specifically the achampong people since i came to jamaica i have noticed that most of your houses are on top of the hills and um it is unique <laughs> different and i'm wondering are you guys not afraid of soil erosion like has it not happened in jamaica before because up here we are guys we came up high up and uh, we're literally on top of a hill and here there's a whole community um and i'm like how you know it's just something that i'm not used to and i'm trying to understand like do you guys ever have like is it not dangerous to build houses on top but i guess it's not because clearly they're here and guys are living life like everything is okay but as a foreigner you know i just have questions so please help me answer the questions down below thank you So these are like water catchments. Yeah. Systems so that catch the water. And then, yeah, you see this um, blue drum that you see. Yeah. We also used to collect water, water. with it back home. So mm -hmm. it is happy. Oh wow. So you you wait for rainwater? Yeah, we go for rainwater, but when we are in dry season we have to buy the chalk water, eh? Oh, okay. Yeah, and like a chalk. Guys, this is very interesting. See how they are getting their water just like we do it uh in some places in Africa, you know? Wait for the rainwater and then catch it in the drums and use it. Wow. I swear these guys just never lost their culture because they're doing things the same way um we do it in africa and when you look straight ahead you can see there's a very beautiful view very hilly and the sun is about to set so yeah it makes it look even more beautiful and it's very very green if you've noticed this place is just extremely green oh they even keep um some domestic animals like goats sheep. wow Look, these are bananas, plantains. Oh, is that Aki? Which one? That's Aki yeah, tree. Yeah. 
you never seen one we passed one close around by the no i've seen them but uh i just hadn't seen them here in this village no, when you were so look come some right here. ah guys you know in jamaica no they love aki the so there you go aki ah you watch me yeah aki so tree watch you on tiktok hi how are you Thank you. Till I say, man, we can check her. Till I say, man, we can come check her. Guys, look at the hens. Whoa. Hey, Henny, Henny. Hey. Wow, they keep them just like we do. This is so interesting. Wow. Look at this home. Beautiful home. These are the hens that they have in Barbados and they say they don't eat them because they are wild hens. But I guess here in Jamaica you guys eat them, right? If they are being blower when the British soldiers were coming. So they'll be in the mountain. When they spot the red coats coming, they would sound the abeng. But he was more like a bodyguard for the abeng blower, you know? You call it aben? Abeng. It's called aben. Yeah, aben. Yeah. But we say A B E N G a bang. Yeah. And it's a symbol horn for yeah. communication. Exactly. Back in those days. And we still use it for funerals, for get together and everything. Just for grave digging and everything, we still use it. It's exactly the same thing. Eight years old because that's the one they used to have in the war. You still here? Yeah, we still have it here. You said this man is called who? Um, Leonard Perkins. Leonard Perkins. Yeah. Wow. So this was made in his honor. Wow. What are you doing? Pouring libration. Just pouring libration, you know? As I tell every aspect of the way, I always pour libration because I love to give respect to the ancestors, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here's where the food is cooked in January for the for this festival, the ceremonial food. Meanwhile, it is cooking here. The people are over on that side singing, drumming, and dancing. After it is finished cook, so mistaken down to a ear called Old Town or Unfairy Town. Mm. That's where they used to live before to give respect to the ancestor. And then they march back up and the rest of the food that is here is shared to whosoever want to eat. And people have it to say when they eat that food they get lucky. Give them like a ear own luck. Yeah. You know, present in Jamaica, Rasta don't really eat pork and I see Rasta eat pork. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's only pork you cook? Pork and chicken. Okay. Why? The because, because they used to hunt wild boars and they used to hunt birds so we use the chicken for the for the birds you now and yam and planting this plant is called king of the forest and like you when you have some things on skin uh -huh. you can either boil it and drink it or you rub it out and, and put it on that you know king of the forest this, yeah. this one yeah. wow yeah. this one what you, have... well, you remember what i tell you about the plants yeah see it's sleeping right now look how the leaves are closing oh yeah wait the so, leaves can open and close yeah no so what he's trying to say is that but after one o'clock after one o'clock i don't look herbs to, look to do herbs. medicine ah oh. because they sleep and wake up in the morning what if you notice look on the leaves see the leaves them shocking up there look up there so they're gonna open up in, in the, the morning. morning yeah Wow, that's interesting. Bean is called castor bean. Oh. What they used to make the castor oil. Yeah. But if you eat one or two of the beans, we have a mix so we have to put flour in the pot and part it and give it to stop the pump. What? Stop it. Please. Stop it or makes you shit. Make you shit. Yeah, give it to me. I wanna shit tonight. <laughs> what? What are you doing? Sugar. Yeah, sugar. sugar. It's sugar? Yeah, it's sweet. Is it sweet? Mm. Oh, this is hibiscus. Yeah. And oh, it's please. Too, it's too variety. Oh wow. Yeah. This is I've never variety. seen a hibiscus tree before. How beautiful is this? Wow. Let me try it. Oh wow. This is also hibiscus. Yes. Yeah, oh, now this one has opened up. This no, there are two different varieties. You know? Oh, there are yeah. two different types. There's this and there's yeah. that. Yeah. Those are these ones. Ooh. Hello, how are you? Good, you? I'm good too. Oh. <laughs> I told you, these guys are so friendly. The sunset does it for me, and this is where I'm gonna be ending my video. So, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you love this sunset, please give it a thumbs up. 
if you love me please give the video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe until next time bye